Hello and welcome again to RC Model Reviews. Today I'm going to do some more of the RC basics and lots of people asked for more information on how these little brushless outrunner motors work. So today I'm going to be talking about KV because a lot of people asked, can you explain KV? And as an electronics engineer, KV to me always meant kilovolts, K being a thousand and V being volts. But that's not the way it works with these little motors. K stands for rotations per second. Uh, sorry, rotations per minute, RPM. So a motor like this, which is 1400 kV, that simply means that for every volt of electricity you apply to this motor, it will turn at 1400 RPM. So one volt, 1400, two volts, 2800, three volts, etc. You do the math. Now that's a pretty sort of, uh, sometimes it's a pretty optimistic estimate and these figures aren't always particularly accurate, but what we're going to do today, I'm gonna to show you how or whether that's actually true for this motor. Because I've got with me here my little, somewhere, I've lost it. Anyway, somewhere here I have the Hangar 9 optical tachometer, which measures the RPM of engines, usually nitro glow engines, with a two-bladed or three-bladed prop. So what I'm going to do with this little motor, is I'm gonna put some tape around here, I'm gonna put two black marks on it, and then I'm going to connect it up to a two-cell battery, which is nominally, um, what are they? Seven point something, aren't they, I think? Uh, no, well, I can't read it now. Anyway, the nominal voltage of this pack is, it doesn't say, so it's 3.8 3 times 2, so it's got to be 7.6. 7.6 volts nominal voltage. So we'll actually measure the voltage as well, because I have here somewhere, lost that too, um, the little watt ba battery balancer watt meter thingy here. Now, you get these, they're cheap as beans. I've already reviewed one of these before, this particular one, in fact, and they're really, really useful. If you fly electric models, you need one of these. You really, really do. You'll have so much more success if you know how many amps your motor's drawing and if you know how many watts it's, the motor is basically handling because you don't want to overpower things. We don't want to put too much power into a motor that can't handle it because I'll also be talking about power levels and how to calculate uh, the right power and how to get the right power out of your motor and how not to blow things up because that's quite important. No fun, well, it is fun blowing them up, but it's expensive, so we don't want to blow stuff up. So what I've got here, it's pretty straightforward, I've got the 1400 kV motor and an ESC speed controller, and we're going to connect a battery up to it. Now, as I mentioned before, batteries are DC. These motors are AC, and that's where the ESC comes in. In the middle, it takes the DC from the battery, turns it into AC. And it also has a little lead goes off to your receiver for the throttle, because It'd be no good if it just ran the motor at full power all the time until the battery went flat. So this little lead here enables the ESC not only to convert the DC to AC, but also to control the speed of the motor. So it won't be putting the full battery power into the motor when you're just cruising around or idling or whatever. So that's how that works. So let's actually just take that circuit and we'll actually put this battery watt meter, or this motor watt meter, in series with the battery so we'll be able to see First of all, how much voltage is coming out of the battery? Secondly, how much current is going into the motor? And thirdly, how many watts of power we're actually putting into this motor? Because they're all very important things. Right, let's set this up and see how we get on. Okay, here's our test rig set up, all ready to go. And as you can see, we've got a motor. This is a motor. I don't know the KV of this motor because it's a one that Hobby King sent me just to test and evaluate and see what I thought of. It's one of their donkey range. So, it's probably going to be low, you can generally tell low KV motors because they, they tend to be a, um, like these pancake motors tend to be quite low KV, whereas your high KV motors tend to be a bit longer and thinner. And uh, so we don't know what the KV on this motor is. We're going to find out. And how will we find out what the KV of the motor is? Well, we know that it's so many RPMs per volt. So if we simply fire this motor up using our little watt meter here, which will tell us how many volts are going in, and we use our tachometer to measure the RPM, then we can do some simple math and find out what the KV is. So the lighting's a bit dodgy in here at the moment, but I'll try it out anyway. Let's fire it up. I've got the little speed control here so I can wind this up. Got my tachometer. So I'll try and wind it up, hold everything together, and we'll see how many RPMs this does. Right, let's have a look. Try and get it steady. There we go, 5,900 and 10, 5910, because the zero doesn't show up. And that's the 7.4, write that down. I'll better hold this back again. Got to get the things right. Five, it's dropping down because the voltage is dropping in the battery. 5910. 
5910 and the voltage is 7.4 volts or 7.47 volts 7.47 there you go that's all we need to know now we can turn all this infernal racket off put that away get my calculator out and I'll calculate the kV of this motor that I don't really know yet so I will take 5910 RPM and I will divide it by the voltage which was 7.47 and I will press equals and it comes out to 791 which means this is an, about an 800 kV motor so now I know now I know how many kV this is if I'd used a three cell pack I would have had more RPMs and more voltage but the the resulting number here the kV would have been the same because it doesn't change depending on how many cells you put on so now I know this is a relatively low kV motor and that means it will turn a large prop relatively slowly it's got a lot of torque and you can really sort of see why this would be a lower kV motor than this all else being equal is because this is a bigger diameter and therefore it's got more torque there's a longer moment of force between the shaft and the outside where the magnets are so this is going to be a far more torquey motor Whereas this being a shorter moment, it's probably going to be a higher revving motor. It's a rule of thumb, it's not always true, but it's something that is, you know, you can sort of, if all else fails, you can rely on that to give you a rough idea of whether it's going to be a high, high RPM, high KV motor, or a low RPM, low KV motor. So there we go, but let's go back and look at our 1400 KV motor, which I will now test, and we'll see if we can calculate in advance what its speed should be. Okay, now I've got the... 1400 kV motor and let's assume the voltage is going to be about the same as last time which I think was about 7.47 it's going to be 7 point it will have dropped a little bit so let's say we're going to have where's my calculator wrong thing take my calculator I'll type in 7.45 which will be the voltage and I'll multiply that times 1400 which is the kV rating of the motor and press equal we should get about 10,430 RPM, about 10,500 RPM when I fire this up on the two cell pack. Let's see if that's what I really get. Should be quite exciting. I might have to hold this down because it'll bounce and shake all over the place. Let's see what happens. Get the tacker in the right place. Ten thousand and ninety-two. Oh, it goes almost 11,000. So it's varying a bit depending on the lighting. Can you get it just right with these tachometers? So 10, yeah, I think 10,000, well, 11 and a half there nearly. So we'll say with all that bouncing around, 11,3 looks pretty safe. 11, say 11,300. That'll do. And the voltage was about right. 11,300. Let's do. 11,300. So it was a bit higher than the figure we calculated. So this isn't actually a 1,400 kV motor at all. It's probably closer to 1,500 kV. So the, the markings aren't always correct. You can't always believe, but they give you a pretty close, pretty close estimate to what you're looking at. So you don't have to worry about checking each one to see if it's dead right. They'll be within a few hundred RPM or at the most, possibly, you know, um, probably about a 20% error margin on most of these motors when they do the kV rating. So there you go. That's KV, that's how it works, that's how you can measure it if you want to, but why would you need to know? So why would you need to know the KV rating? Well, so you can choose the right motor for the right model and the right prop size. And this is where it gets a little bit trickier because you can't just use your calculator. There's a few rules of thumb involved. Now, generally speaking, these high KV motors, the ones that spin really fast for a given amount of voltage, use those to drive smaller props and put them in smaller faster planes for example here is the rear bear now this is an incredibly fast model but look at the size of the prop it's got a tiny little prop you can see there it's not big at all so that prop in order to do much work has to spin really fast so it has a high kV motor I'm not quite sure it's about 2800 kV or something I think in these maybe a bit higher so it has to spin this little prop really really fast and that makes the model go fast itself also if you've got something like a ducted fan I mean, look at this. Inside there, there's a tiny little fan, 50 millimetres. The fan is actually probably about 48 millimetres in diameter. And so to get that to produce any thrust, it has to spin incredibly fast. So this has got a 4,800 kV motor in it, I think, or yeah, about a 4,800. So that spins very, very fast. 
But if we take something like this slow flying 3D model, which is hooked up in my bag, there we go. You see, this is a very light model. It wouldn't fly fast because it would fall apart, but it's got this huge prop. See the size of this prop? And that prop there is driven by a motor which is actually smaller than the motor in the rear bear, but it's a low kV motor. So it can turn this big prop very slowly with lots of torque. So low kV motors generally drive bigger props and are designed more for slower flying models. And of course, as motors themselves get bigger, the kV figure tends to drop because bigger motors will drive bigger props. So you'll only find high kV ratings in very small motors. And the smaller you go, the higher the kV rating. As I said, the little EDF motor I showed you the other day, this little tiny thing here, this is probably about a 4800 kV because it's designed to type drive a very small fan. Bigger motors, I've got some really big ones. Let's have a look. Somewhere around here I had a huge one. There we go. Look at the size of that. That's another one of these donkey motors. And it is huge diameter and it would drive, it's probably, I'd say this would be about a, well, maybe I'll measure this in another video, but Remember this one here was, the other one we, we tested here, this was about 790, 800 kV. This is probably going to be about 650, 600, 500, 600, just as a guess because it's so much bigger. They have a lot of torque, could turn a very big prop, but not very quickly. So kV is important when you're looking at the size of your model and, and the speed you want it to fly at and the size of propeller it needs to turn. But I can't give you a direct formula. There's no formula that says this kV motor can use this prop on this model. It just doesn't work that way. There has to be some trial and error. And that's where these little devices here that I mentioned before come in so handy because the important things with motor, motors is how many watts can they deliver? And that's determined pretty much by how much current they can handle. As I showed you in the first video in this series, the motors have electromagnets and the wire they use to wind the electromagnets determines how much current a motor can handle. And the thicker the wire, the more current. But small motors tend to have thin wire, so that's why you, with a little motor like this, you're only going to get maybe two or 300 watts, probably 300 watts out of that. A bigger motor, you're going to get more watts because the wire will be thicker, it can handle more current. Now, it's getting a little bit complicated. What I'm going to do now is, I've explained KV, I'm going to have to do another video where I'll explain the relationship between prop sizes and power and current and power. So this is just to answer that question that people were asking. KV, what is it, what is it? Well, there we go. It's like, it's, to put it simply, it's like the gearing in a car. You have a low kV motor, and that was you to drive very slowly. It's like first gear. Low kV is like first gear. You can drive very slowly, but you've got a lot of power. You can go up very steep hills. Low kV motor doesn't turn very fast, but it will turn a much bigger prop, and it has a lot of torque. A high kV motor is like driving in top gear down the, down the freeway, down the motorway. It um, doesn't have much torque. You can't spin the wheels in top gear, but you can get an awful lot of speed, a lot of RPMs out of the back wheels. So a high kV motor is like driving in top gear. That's really the difference. I hope that's made it clear to you. I'm sure there'll be lots of questions. If there are, put them on the bottom of the video. I'll do my best to answer them in plain English as opposed to tech speak. And I say the next video, I'll be dealing with power, how to select the right power model, power motor for your model, and how many cells do you use, and how do we work out, you know, all the amps and that sort of thing. And I'll try, I'll have to think hard about it to make that simple. But thank you for watching. See you again in the RC Basics series on RC Model Reviews.